Hi. Having some issues here this afternoon. Hello. It's 1.41 p.m. It's a lot later than I like to do videos, but there were some things that needed my personal attention right away. Got that taken care of. So now we can get to this. Hello, saints. <clears throat> Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me in the scriptures we're going to be considering today. Don't trust me. Don't trust me. Trust this. Trust the scriptures. Not me. Okay? Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. <clears throat> okay? Read along with me. Because faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. What is the word of God? The authorized version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. You know, I'm going to kick myself in this video. I'm going to kick me and you, Saint. We need it. I, I, it's, I'm always full of wonder when you see these Christians. Excuse me. <coughs> no, I'm kind of like Catholic now with me. Um, it's like when I start to hear the term Christian, it's it starts to it's starting to make me want to gag. But I find it interesting with some, not all, some of these Christian people on YouTube here. Uh, right away, I think of the uh, perfect, perfect Black Poolian devil. Who, you know, is always pointing out everyone's hypocrisies, but you know what? Fail, uh, purposely neglects to see that there are three fingers pointing back at him. Yeah, that's a good example of what I'm talking about. These guys who always point the finger at everybody else, and then you, y'all cowards! You're bark, 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 as it goes. Why? Because, um, you know, the scriptures tell us to examine ourselves. But yet, when you point the finger, how many are pointing back at you? Now, see, myself and many other of the saints, we do as the scripture says. Examine ourselves, prove ourselves, whether we be in the faith. Daily examination through scripture. Okay? That's a daily occurrence there, brother, sister. You, you need to do that daily. You can't take a day off. The day you take a day off, that's when you can have some big troubles. Okay? You compare yourself to the scriptures. And then it won't take long for you to figure out that you can't live up to them. And like one, one guy called and said, you're a wretched man. You're right, I am. You are right. I am. I am. Me. <laughs> Romans 7, 24 and 25. O oh, wretched man that I am. This is present tense from verses 15. Well, the whole, the whole chapter, Romans 7, is present tense. But from verse 15 to the close of Romans 7, Paul, as a saint... For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. You see, you, and I'm going to address this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this first. You stupid, vile, filthy scum who teach sinless perfection such as an open-air preacher. That man is a devil who is willfully guiding people to hell by making them trust in themselves, 
not in the God who is. And I have no remorse, nor regret, nor repentance for anything that I say against that filth open air preacher. Now, could I put it in a different way? Sure. Maybe. Sure. But do I regret anything I've said about that vile devil? No. Same thing with you disgusting, vomitous pig free gracers. Not all of you, though. The ones who are promoting, the ones who are, t like the dear little talk show host, I have no remorse, nor regret, nor repentance of anything that I have said of these vile, vomitous, filth bag, scum, free gracers who are guiding you people to hell. I have no remorse, regret, or repentance for anything I have said about them. They are the enemies of Christ. Okay? I have no remorse, no regret, or repentance of anything I have said about you. None. Making people trust in themselves. And once we, the body of Christ, is taken out of here, and they're going to still be just believe and receive, and then you Christians who get left behind, you're going to take that mark of the beast, believe and have, just believe and receive, once saved, always saved, in a dispensation where it is by faith and works. That's why these guys, this, this theology of free grace is so vomitous. Because they tell you it's by grace for faith from beginning to end, which it is not. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You filth bag scum devil. Yes, you do. That is what you teach and preach. Yes, it is. And that's a lie. Okay? Therefore, you, free grace devils, are guiding people to hell. I have no remorse or regret or re repentance for anything I have said of any of you devils. None. But, but, it's the ones that are on the fringe. There are, let me, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. And this, this, this astonishes me. Brethren, do you know that there are actually saints, actually saved brethren and sisters, just as saved as you and I, who actually truly believe in one God and three persons? There are. There are actual saints, saints, who are on the teeter-totter. And when you have two like weights on a teeter-totter, there comes a part, point where it might stable itself out a little bit. And see, with the saints, number one, are they a brother or a sister? Number one. But when one shows that they are, but yet on that teeter-totter, we, as fellow saints, we have to have grace. Because remember, you tell a lie often enough, long enough, and loud enough, people will believe it. The Trinity. Okay? Which is not who God is. Catholicism from her inception, that was the doctrine that they taught. So, saints even, saved, saints, there are, there are, they are out there. Uh, ones who are even dear saints, who, for whatever reason, can't yet reach that point where they accept that, you know, we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. For as much as I vehemently disliked the man from Maine, he did that beautiful, excellent video. Got to give him the due for it. Where he did that, the uh, three Brian's, okay? When he did that video, that was perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hey, hey, hey there, man. Count your pennies in your cars. That was beautiful. That was, you know, where he did the uh, three Brian thing. That was beautiful. 
That was just like, wow, that was a good one. Okay? But for whatever reason, there are saints who still believe in one God and three persons. I don't know why. And, and one of these is like, well, Brad, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong, Brad? And my response is to that always. Uh, well, you know what? Guess what? I've been wrong quite a bit. <laughs> the videos are there to prove it. When uh, the brethren have rebuked me, it's like, oh, Brad, 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 come here. Let's get the screen. Oh, wow. Wow, dude. Okay, there, uh, there have been many times. And see, they're left up on the video on the channel that the Lord gave me to show you that I make mistakes. Okay? I make mistakes. See, that for some reason, these, these ones who, who point the finger and these ones who, who want to placate to men, they, they, they give this thing that they're without error, that they're perfect or something like that. Um, you know, <laughs> then you could throw in those, those idiot, uh, um, sinless perfection people. Again, I have no remorse, no regret, or any repentance. If you are, if you are willfully believing that you don't sin anymore, you're stupid. Paul, Romans seven. Hey, read Romans seven. All present tense. See, Paul apparently missed the memo that you sinless perfection dolts are spewing. Somehow Paul, the greatest of the church of God, who is the least of all men, somehow he missed that one. Like I said to you, saints, you, these, these sinless perfection guys, you, 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 Romans 7, that's, that's, you know, poof, done. Okay? Done. There's, there's no more. <laughs> they'll, they'll want to keep you going in circles, but it's like, dude, that's all present tense. And yeah, yeah, I can't see that. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this, the body? See, that goes into Romans 8 and tells you that sin is where? In the flesh. Okay? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paul is not saying, hey, go ahead and do it. He's not saying that. What is he saying? You're going to sin. You cannot cease from sin until you're dead. Okay? All right? That's basically what he's talking about there. Okay? But that's the point. It's the point of this video. I have said, <laughs> I've got a big mouth, <laughs> and I'm not afraid to speak my mind. And if you want to if you want to get go back and forth, I am your huckleberry. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, you know, you can throw it at me, but I can also throw it back at you. Forgive me for speaking like a fool. That's how a fool speaks. And like I told you. The ones who teach the uh, sinless perfection, the ones who, and these are the these are the willfully the ones who are doing it willfully, knowing that they're deceiving people. That open air preacher guy, he knows what he's doing. He's guiding people to hell. The free gracers out there, they they know they they know what they're doing. They have a knowledge of the truth in order to speak against it. Okay. Unless you're Jack Smack, and that guy's a stupid idiot. That guy is an idiot. Okay? He's stupid. He's stupid. He can barely give you ten minutes of anything. He's an idiot. Okay? But they know enough of the truth in order to speak against it. I mean, come on. Garden of Eden, by grace to The kingdom of heaven, by grace to faith. But that... But that's what they do. I have no remorse, pity, or repentance for anything I've said against you devils. But it's the ones that you are deceiving. The ones on the fringe. 
And there are saints out there who are messed up in these things. I got a big mouth sometimes. I shoot off at the mouth. I'm not afraid to, but I also recognize that there are times when I should shut up about certain things and not let my not allow myself to go off on the handle. There's the one dear sweet brother of ours who I was on a Skype with once and I started losing my cool and even he was like You remember you know who you are, brother. Remember that when we were talking? And you even like, oh, Brad. It's like, I, I, and what I was like, I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Saints, I have a big mouth. And I have a pride problem. I'm not a perfect black pullian. I'm not a perfect King James Bible waving Christian. God forbid. I make mistakes. It's my fault. And yes, there have been some times when I have gone overboard by no one's fault but my own. See, there are three fingers pointing back at Forgive me. Please, brethren, saints. We read in Romans 2, verses 17 under the, uh, unto the close. Romans 2, no, under verse 24. 17 unto 24. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law. And makest thy boast of God. Now we are not Jews. Okay? We are not Jews. I'm not a Jew. I'm not even Hebraic. I'm Japhethite. You got to remember in Scripture, Jew is likened with the Hebraic people with the one exception in Esther. And it's funny. The devils will fix themselves to that one exception in, in ex Esther and ignore all the sandwich. It's full of wonder. Okay? But we're saints. We saints. We don't, you know, we, we make us and make us thy boast of God and knowest his will. Got it written down for us. And approvest the things and approvest the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the law. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide to the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish. Foolish, fool, says in his heart there is no God. Behaving foolishly, like I did with the, at the beginning of this video. Behaving as if. You say in your heart there is no God. A teacher of babes, which has a form of knowledge and the truth of the law. Verse 21. Verse 21. Verse 21 is addressing the three that are pointed back at me. Thou therefore which teachest others, teachest thou not thyself, See, unlike the perfect Black Poolian <coughs> English creature who points out everybody's hypocrisy but has none of his own. Kind of like Sam Spit. Well, I don't have a, pro a pride problem. Uh. Hey, dude. Yeah, you. I'd love for you just to hear you one time before you take it down, of course. I'd love... Remember, you're, you're trying to deceive people, the uh, suspension of disbelief, huh? I'd love to hear you just once. Admit. Well, I might have some people. 
No, I'd love to hear you just one say it. You know what? I'm a hypocrite sometimes. But no, not you. Not you. Not you. No, 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 no. 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 When you point, you point with all four, right? <laughs> I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear it. I, I'd love to. I'd love to hear any of you high and mighty King James Bible even Christians. I'd love to hear it. That you're a sinner who is chief. I'd love to hear it. I make mistakes. I can be an A1 hypocrite. Yeah, I can be. Let's be real with each other here, man, shall we? Therefore, thou therefore which teachest another, teachest not thyself. And the issue of hypocrisy is being brought up right here. Okay? But see, here's the thing. Sin is here. The flesh. Devils are all about the flesh. Your spirit and soul are in this. You're going to sin. And think about it. If you say one thing and do another, being a hypocrite, and claim not to be, think about it. Roll it around in your head a little bit. Wow, if you're, if you're, you know, you never, never have hypocrisy in you. Never. Never. You're, you're a perfect creature. So, are you like God then? Oh, I never said, no, you didn't say it with your mouth like that, no, but come on. You're without hypocrisy ever? You don't have a pride problem? Huh? God doesn't have pride? God's not a hypocrite? God never sinned? So, when you get these Christians... Who come around, I don't have a pride problem. I don't sin anymore. I'm never a hypocrite. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest the man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest the man should not commit adultery. Dost thou commit adultery? And remember, adultery, oh, that would be a good one. Fornication and adultery. Uh, okay, that would be a good one for the description box. Remember, if you lust after, after a woman with your eyes, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Same goes with you too, sisters. I experienced, unfortunately, that today coming at me out of the bank. And it was one of those, like, whoa, really? Yeah, the, the, the one teller kid girl was, never mind, you don't need to know that. But it was like, and I, I step out of the bank, it's like, wow, I'm a little too old for that. <laughs> if anyone would, I, the fact that anyone, anyone, would think this attractive. You, you know, you, you're smoking with Dave smoking. Thou that abhorrest idols. I like this one. Dost thou commit sacrilege? You hate idols. But yet, what are you going to do on December 25th, pal? Oh, it's not a... Oh, sh just... Just shut up. Where are these people, these so-called Christian leaders, where are these ones who are being accountable? Where are they? Where are they? Where? Now granted, you don't do your dirty laundry in public. But there has to be some kind of transparency here. There must be. I make mistakes, I shoot off at the mouth, I have 
pride problem. I, 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 let my, I allow my temper to get the better of me. Okay? I overdo it. Okay? I'm a man. I'm not perfect. And you know what? I'm accountable to the brethren. I'm accountable to God through his word, which I go through daily. And he rebukes me, strengthens me, educates me, approves, instructs daily through his word. Where's the accountability with some of these guys? But they're, they're too, a lot of them are so too high up on the horse. And then when you got the, hey man, hey man, brother, cult-like followers, bolstering them up, and then they get that, they got that steady nose and the air. <laughs> High-minded, heady. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law and dishonorest thou God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. Hold your place. I oh, know you don't need to hold your place. We're not even into the main part of what we're going to be talking about. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. I believe... Ecclesiastes 10. First, just one verse. Verse 1. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. I've called people jerks. Oh, I shouldn't have. I'm not talking about the devils. I'm not talking about like guys like open air preacher. I'm not talking about guys like praise that he isn't or the news unit idiot jerk. I'm not talking about those guys. Those guys are devils who are willfully deceiving people to guide them to hell. Okay? I have no remorse, no regret, no repentance for anything I've said to those guys. But the ones that are in the fringe there because of those those are the ones unto whom I say, I apologize, I'm sorry. But you guys who are force feeding these people this, even though it's what they want. See, the, the, I, I, just, I just hear the talk show host in the way that, and, and he, he's, he's kind of good in this aspect of it, of the bantering. And justification. He's, he's pretty good. Uh, obviously he's been trained by somebody. Hmm, I wonder who. But I could just picture. Well, it's like, oh, hey, can you blame him, man? That's what the people want. There's the, there was this channel. And the channel there, brother, if you make it this far, was to be like Christ. Who did a five-minute Bible study on Psalm 83, which hopefully next week the Lord will allow a video to be done on Psalm 83, an expository, because that, 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 there's so many people out there just, just messing that up. But the channel was to be like Christ. And I, I watched like not even three minutes of the video that this guy did, and I'm like, wow, dude, you know, Paul preached till midnight. Are you doing a little man pleasing son? Yeah, I didn't call him dude, I called him boy. I said, come on, man. Five minutes. Woo! A lot of meat there. Not, you can't even, you know, you can't even lactate with five minutes. Okay. That's bad. I'm sorry. I was like, come on, man. Hey, anyway. Hey, I, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The ones who are on the fringe... Who are being the ones who are being deceived, who are on the teeter totter, who think they're being indifferent. If you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. Okay, Getty Lee got that one right, even himself. Okay, 
Oh, it was actually Neil Peart or something like that, but you never mind. Accountability. See, Paul was a man. And Paul said that he was the least of all men, the least of all saints. That's what Paul said of himself. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. But you, oh. So we were talking about, you know, con man. We'll leave it at that. The con man. Uh, a couple years ago, he did a, a video where Mr. Fig came out against him about the video game thing. And I'll never forget that. Con man said, quote, I am more than willing to repent. But you, it's a dude. And that, uh, incidentally, when that video came out, I was done with that guy. It's like, <laughs> I am more than willing to repent. But you, did, dude, how brazen. How obvious of an Adamic, not new creature thing is that? I am more than willing to repent, but you did this. Uh, the woman thou gavest me to be with, she gave me of the three, and yes, I did eat. That's exactly what the guy did. And I'm like, wow. We were just, that was fresh in the memory. I was just talking about that with a brother. It's like, wow, really? Okay, <laughs> see ya. See, in James chapter 5, just one verse, James 5, one verse, and of course the Catholic Bibles purposely mess this up so they can get you into a confession booth and you tell a Jesuit priest all the nasty, dirtiest things that come on into your mind so that pervert has information against you. You read the, uh, the, the woman in the confessional book by Charles Chenickley or whatever uh, that Chick Tracks put out, <laughs> okay, but, and you learn how the Jesuits used the confession booth during the World War II era to get information. Why do you think the Catholics are like, you make sure you tell your priest every pervert? No, there's, you know, there are things that you and the Lord are supposed to talk about, you know. You saints are going to learn them all my dumb things I've done when we're at the judgment seat, okay, that, that's scary enough. But it's like, no, you don't go to a Jesuit priest. You don't go to a man. But you go to the man, our Father, our God, Jesus Christ. Okay? But in, but in James 5, 16, confess your faults. Bibles, confess your sins to justify going to confession or trespasses. Okay? Faults. Versus sins and trespasses are two totally different things. But see, the Catholic wants you to go to their Jesuit priest. The Christian wants you to go to the pastor. You're going to go. You need to confess. I will confess, but not to you. Okay, I will. And, and confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Confess your faults. It's my fault no one else's that I allow my temper to get the better of me. That I make the choice to let loose when I should whole have restraint. It's no one else's fault but mine. There are times in videos, <laughs> you've seen them, maybe you haven't, where I go off to the point where I can just you know, picture our, our dear brother overseas there, just like, Fred, come on! And he's right. But I, again, when it comes to you scoundrel, scumbag, sick, jerk devils who are knowingly working for the Vatican, Deceiving people, guiding them into hell. Deceiving and being deceived. Open air preacher, he ain't innocent. He knows what he's doing. Pray he said he isn't. I don't know, that guy's pretty stupid. He is. But, you know, 
Uh, Elmer from New York, he's not innocent. He knows what he's doing. Yankee Arnold, that wicked old coot, he knows what he's doing. He knows that he's deceiving people into hell. Even the beloved talk show host. And that, that, that's, that's sarcasm. <laughs> okay? Even he, he knows. He knows. And I even give that man respect. <laughs> yeah, anyone who's going to sit us through beginning to end of a video of over two hours, okay, yeah, okay, that's more than most do. <laughs> but see, now, like I said, you don't do your dirty laundry in public. No, you don't do. But there has to be a transparency. There is an accountability. And you people need to know that the ones who are speaking to you, while they, you know, we have not yet attained perfection. Okay? And I think a lot of these Christian preachers, so-called, no, they are Christians, not saints. I need to remember that too. Proverbs 8. Today is the 8th. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Go to every place but to where I want to go to. Okay. Proverbs 8. Verses 1 under verse 14. Doth not wisdom, the fear of the Lord, cry, and understanding, departing from evil, put forth her voice. Her. Like on to a beautiful woman. She standeth in the top of high places. By the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates before you go in there. It's like, hey. <laughs> you need to have wisdom and understanding. Fear the Lord and departing from his, uh, evil. She crieth at the gates before you even go in there. Don't go there. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Move thy foot from evil. She's at the gates before you make the decision to go in there. At the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors, unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. O ye simple, understand wisdom. Wisdom. What is wisdom? Be afraid of the Lord. See, when you're afraid of the Lord, there ain't much any other things that can scare you that bad. Okay? Uh, there are certain things that could put a scare in you. Some of these um, woke, feminazi, hemetic women out there, they're just like, whoa, <laughs> I'd hate to, I'd hate to encounter, encounter that in reality. But, uh, you know, uh, O ye simple, understand wisdom. Fear God. And ye fools who say in your heart there is no God, be ye of an understanding heart, departing from evil. See, the fool says in his heart there is no God. And what replaces that? Themselves. So then they go give themselves against understanding and go to, uh, into evil. This is why I hate free grace. Because they're like all about, go do it. The more you do, the better it is. Hey, we're not even under the morality of the law, but we're under Satan's grace. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, and there is nothing froward or perverse in them. All the words of my mouth. All the words of my mouth. Scripture is given by inspiration of God. God wrote it through the hand of man. He's the author of it. Okay? They are all plain to him that understandeth. 
See, when you're justifying going and living in evil, doing evil, when you're busy pointing and not even wanting to consider the three that are pointing back at you, I'd love for you, I'd love to hear it, bloke. I challenge you, bloke. One time. One time. Just say it. Come on. For the suspension of disbelief, for its sake alone. Let's hear you say it. Let's hear you say it. I'm a hypocrite sometimes. Can you do it? Hey! You can say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. Let's hear you say that. Let's hear you say that, tough guy. Yeah. Let's hear any of you Christians who are so busy. Hey, Franklin, can you do that? Can you hold up the hand? Say, oh, yeah, I'm a hypocrite sometimes. You can't do it, can you, though? Can you, sweet pie? See, and the inability for one to do that shows one glaring thing. A lack of genuine brokenness. Well, if you've been through what I've been through, if I ever hear that come from your mouth again, I'm going to bite your head off. Don't ever say that to me again. <laughs> Any of you. Well, if you've been through what? I'll bite your head off. <laughs> I will. So shut up. Shut up. Don't you even. Be quiet. Receive. Oh, wait. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. It's so easy to point that out in others. But, you know, in, in order for us to judge other saints, we need to start with ourselves first. I have a pride problem and I hate myself for it. I can be arrogant, and I hate myself for it, okay? I make stupid decisions sometimes, and <laughs> my mouth can be very froward, unfortunately. <laughs> what Christian and preacher out there is going to tell you that? No, because they have a facade. They have a ministry that they got to uphold. They want people to trust them. Where are they saying that? Where are they being honest enough with you? Where are they? Where are they? You know who I hate the most? Me. That one dude in one comment. It's like, you're a wretched man. Amen, I am. Amen. Paul called himself a wretched man. Oh, wretched man that I am. You know why? Because Paul wanted to stop sinning. But he realizes, well... Our spirit and soul are in this sagging sin suit. He can't. Yeah. Counsel is mine. 
and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. I am departed from evil. What is wisdom? You fear God. No, you fear God. What's the, like 20 people like, oh, you're just a chicken, Brad. You know what? <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm not going to have to give an account to you. It's to my father. Okay, so you go on and roll up another one and take yourself a big old swig of that. And in Proverbs 18, just one verse, Proverbs 18, one verse, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Ah. Now the Pentecostals, who believe that they can create things by what they say. Name it and claim it, blab it and nab it. Yeah, you talk about heresy. The Pentecostals, like the T.D. Jakes, the uh, Kenneth Doplins, that wicked uh, snake guy. Oh, he was a Kenneth also. Hagen, he did that. And talk, you know, snake sound. And, he, you know, those were guys who taught that you can create things by what you say. You can't do that. The only one who can, God said. And uh, Kenneth, I think it was Kenneth Hagen, or uh, one of those two idiots, um, Doplin or Hagen, it's like, you don't have a God in you, you are one. And the little gods, ye are gods. You know, Creflo Dollar, I mean, this is, even for the... the, the even for like free gracers, even they know this. Calvinists even know this one about those guys, you know. Ye are gods, you know. What is this talking about? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Romans 6. Romans 6. Our tongue. See this? I've blown it before, brethren. I've said things I shouldn't have said. I've behaved in ways I should not have behaved. And you know whose fault it is? Mine! Oh, yeah, your, your little sweetheart up there, he irritates me, and he knows it. <laughs> he, he laughs about it. So does the bloke. So do all the easy believers, and so do a lot of people. But you know what? Dear little Canadian talk show host, sweetheart up there, he doesn't make me pull the trigger. Neither does the bloke. Neither do the disciples of that idiot uh, open-air preacher. I sent the brethren this uh, atrocious video about these woke people and the whole Trump thing. Uh, you brethren, you know who you are, who I sent that to. I'm not going to share that with the rest of the body. They don't need to see whatever, you know. But, um, you know, remember, when you point the finger, there are three fingers that are pointing back at you. How do you deal with those three fingers? Do you be like the, the Christian guys, like the free gracers, like that uh, the perfect uh, English gentleman? It's like instead of having the, here, <laughs> there's nothing pointing back at me. How do you deal with it when it has to come from you first? Fear of the Lord is a hate evil. Pride. You hate it in other people. What about in you? I don't have a pride problem. <laughs> Okay, let's go. That's it. Why are we even talking then? Why, why am I even wasting time with you, right? Right? Sam Spit? Huh? I don't have a pride problem. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, I guess you're just like God then. Huh? Well, I don't see him. Oh, pfft. okay. Oh, okay. Let's take our, let's, why don't we take our pen and scratch out Romans chapter 7 then, huh? <laughs> I, I'm never a hypocrite. Oh, 
Then I guess we should tear out Acts 21 as well. Oh, and what about Peter, huh? All the world denied thee, yet I never will. And what does he do? That was before he was saved. You are right. But what do you do about Galatians 2? When Paul rebuked him. He was saved then. There, Nice try there. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Romans 6, 19-23. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. you got, you got to make the right choice. Influence is there, yes. Yes. But none of you. And I want to put woke in the um, hashtag thing. Because these woke people are just disgusting. Nobody pulls the trigger except you. Once that bullet leaves that barrel, it's not coming back. Everything might be around you to maybe influence you. But at the end of the day, and see, this is what you can't get away from no matter how hard you try. That's all that easy believism is about. Try, you are the one who pulls the trigger. It's ironic in a way because easy believism, free grace theology, is all about you saving yourself. But yet they don't take personal accountability. They hide, we're all sinners. That's why they hate Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18. Because it does this, like what our Father, Jesus Christ, does. And see, and this is the measure of a saint. Now, we can, as saints, we could <laughs> don't want to deal with it, but sooner or later, we got the Father in us, we're going to deal with it. Or the Lord is going to make certain things happen in order as a saint to get you to deal with it. He's not going to force you to. But he will do things to where you will be left with no other options. Oh yeah, you have an option. You can go on, but things will just get worse and worse and worse and worse. See, sooner or later, you're going to have to deal with what? You're not good. And no one, no one makes you pull the trigger. No one makes you act the way you act. You might want to blame society. You, you, you might want to blame, blame the Republicans and chump. You might want to uh, blame the Democrats. And the woke idiots. Someone else's fault the way I am. No, it isn't. Because you're the one who made the decision. No one made it for you. That hurts. <laughs> that hurts. I mean... You, a lot of you don't understand Romans 7. You don't. Okay, you don't. Because <laughs> Paul is eliminating, it's me. I am the man. <laughs> I am more than willing to repent, but you... For when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Servant. Servant. Free will. For when ye were servants, the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then, and those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Are you ashamed of those things? Look at these free graces. What, what shame do they have? You listen to that idiot Tom, 
The only shame he seems to have is when anything resembles holiness, who he outrightly called garbage. Frankly, why are you messing around with that guy? Don't you, don't you know you got people that you need to put on the facade for? What are you doing messing around with that guy? I would expect a little bit better from you. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I really would. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end, everlasting life. And like I said, Tom, that prays that he isn't, called holiness garbage. The bloke even got that on tape, evidence like he does, where he says it and he like looped it. Called holiness garbage. But that's what you people want. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. Sin. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. Life and death. You're speaking. Are you speaking of life, of the Lord Jesus Christ, or death? <laughs> hey, continue in sin. Don't worry about it. The more sin you do, the more grace you've got. Ephesians 4, 21 and 32, to the close. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, how do you hear and be taught by the Lord? Number one, you need to be saved. And the Holy Ghost, he will guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word. Authorized version is truth. Okay? That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Choice. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Don't use things to try to justify sin. Like the free gracers do. Some will go to the scriptures in order to justify sin. Unfortunately, I have listened to Tom and his nonsense on a few occasions. That guy owes me. <laughs> the horrible. Okay? That's what they do. You go through scripture to try to find justification for yourself and for sin. Where's the renewing of the mind? It's not there. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Again, Tom called holiness garbage. Wherefore, putting away lying. Sinless perfection is a lie. Free grace is a lie. Okay? Catholicism is a lie. Believe or receive is a lie. <laughs> By grace through faith from beginning to end is a lie. Easily pr uh, proven otherwise. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry. It's okay to be angry. And sin not. See this? Hey, guess what? I've been angry, and I've sinned. I have. I have said things in anger that I can't take back. See, this is why we got to be very careful about what comes out of our mouth. 
Because once certain once that bullet leaves that barrel, there's no coming back. I'd rather you punch me. Sometimes, I've I've had black eyes. I've had busted lips. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> okay. Those heal. But a but a sharp word. Ooh. Especially a lie. Ooh. Those hurt. And those calcify at times. At times with to a scar that is a painful, itchy, scratchy reminder, yeah. And yes. I need to be more mindful of my mouth too. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't go to bed angry. Again, I've blown that. Have you? Of course, I'm not talking to you there, bloke, because you're you're a perfect Englishman. Oh yeah, you're perfect. Yeah, you have no hypocrisy. You don't do anything. Well, I guess maybe I do. See, in order to keep up deceiving people, you need to get the guess out and just you know, once be honest. For okay, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Neither give place to the devil. See, we can be angry, but when we sin in anger and go to bed in anger, what are we doing? Verse 27, we're giving place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that, that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Twofold about this. It's twofold. Hold your place, 2 Corinthians 2. 2 Corinthians 2. Four, what, what did I write? 17. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 on to 17. To the close. Now thanks be unto God which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor, so doth a little folly him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. Wow, I just threw that out there. <laughs> I didn't. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. The way you serve God reflects him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you see this? There have been times. Yes. No, no excuse. And I blame no one but me. The way I have served the Lord has been an offense to him. Even here, I admit that. Because I'm not afraid, because I know on whom I believe, and I'm going to have to give an account to him. Son? And you will. You make sure that in whatever the Lord calls you to do, this aspect of you is there. Never let it go. We'll have our moments, son. We always do. But never let this part go. Because the people that have been there, done that, for years and years and years, have. Don't let it go. What? Don't let what go? I'm a sinner who is chief. That what I want to do, I don't. But what I hate, that I do. And I can't blame anyone else but me. That alone. That 
alone is what Christianity is lacking. Especially from the ones who preach it. Amen, brother. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death, unto death. They don't want to hear it. They want to remain ignorant. I would not know that the law, that um, you're not supposed to covet unless the law said thou shalt not covet. See, they don't want to hear it. Because the minute they hear the truth, then they supply to know. So they go to Christianity. Don't scare them by telling them the truth, but love them into the kingdom. We're not making a kingdom today. Again, why do the antinomianist free gracers skip over 1, Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18? Why? Because it points the finger at you. You won't be ignorant. <laughs> you will not be ignorant of your state if you with, you know, with ready heart, with a ready mind, wanting, okay, tell me truth. You read Romans 1, 2, and 3, up to verse 18. It's like... Lost people hate that. So, when we, saints, seek to exemplify dependence... And a transparency like that. We're the savor of death unto death. And to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. You check a Bible, they take out corrupt and put pedal or do something else with this. The Bibles mess that verse up. Check it. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but of but as of sincerity, sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Twofold. Profanity, yes. But more rather this context. Corrupt. You got to keep the commandments today. No, you don't. It's for another dispensation. It's by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble in the kingdom of heaven. No, they're not. No, it's not. Okay? Just believe and receive. No. See, that's corrupt communication. You're a Hebrew because you're black. That's corrupt communication. Is profanity in there? Absolutely. But more rather context. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That disgusting news unit guy, Dave, he every other thing is a profanity. He's edifying people on the sin. Think about that. Think about that. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's why, you know, brethren, if I'm wrong on something, correct me. Don't correct me with your feelings. And the brethren know this. Don't correct me with your feelings. You correct me here. Show me, please. Show me. Show me. In if I'm wrong on something, brother Brad, there's uh, we need to talk okay let's talk. show me where and they show me this has happened many a time Brad will you do it it's, oh oh boy oh boy I got the video <laughs> but show me here here let all bitterness bitterness 
bitter. Bitterness. Guess what? I can be bitter sometimes. In wrath. Oh yeah. Guilty. In anger. And clamor. Clamor. Clanking two pans together. And evil speaking. The context. When you're bitter, when you're wrath, anger, and clamor, evil speaking, differing from verse 29. See, this context intuits both. Corrupt communication. you got to keep the commandments. Or, it's by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. That's corrupt communication. Evil speaking. Bitter, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, profanity. Calling people jerks when you shouldn't. I am sorry. I, I don't repent for what I said about devils. I have no repentance, regret, or remorse about that. The ones on the fringe, I am sorry. Forgive me. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another brethren tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for your for Christ's sake hath forgiven you see right there it shows you what verse 32 is talking about does that mean that we don't be kind to lot no we got no 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 we be like we be kind okay we are we are supposed to okay but this context is talking about between one another. Okay? Like I've said before, there are people out there who I think are brethren that I miss and I wish I could have fellowship with again. They, they don't want anything to do with me because they're, they're, they're wrapped up with whatever. Okay, whatever. That's fine. But in heaven it will be different. You know? Now, did we finish? Let's go back. Let's go back there again and just make sure. 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 2. Oh no, we already we already did that, okay? Titus chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 7. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, but gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. Evil speaking. Now, we already looked at evil speaking. Speak evil of no man. Open air preacher is preaching sinless perfection. Okay? It is not evil speaking of him as a foul scum devil who is guiding people to hell. Okay? That's not evil speaking. Okay? He's a devil. But it says, Brad, speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers, fighting, physical. You don't force religion or whatever onto other people. You don't force it like Catholicism did. Okay? But gentle, shewing all meekness unto all men. See, and you put into context bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking speak evil of no man to be no brawlers what happens when you get mad enough you want to punch someone right but gentle you don't cram it down their throat you don't force anything on anyone okay i've made that mistake before shooing all meekness unto all men meekness 
is not weakness. Remember that. Because it takes a lot of strength, actually, to be meek. To think of yourself as the least of all. Where Christianity wants you to think you're number one. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. See, the difference here is when you got people who have made the choice and are serving Satan, like the free gracers, like that open air preacher, okay, they're gone. The impossible is possible with God, yes. But they have made a conscious decision to speak contrary to the truth. Okay? They're our enemies. And you love your enemy by giving them truth. Okay? But, again, the ones that are on the fringe, there is a distinction. There is a distinction. Because you'd be casting pearls before swine. Like, you know, trying to reach open-air preacher that he might actually repent and actually get saved after so long, over 16 years, apparently, preaching sinless perfection? Uh, no, no. Casting your pearls before swine. The one said that he's, uh, he's deceiving. That's who we focus on. Dade Murphy! Be a waste of time to witness to him. Because he's, I don't want Jesus. Okay? A lot of the Catholics, unfortunately, they, you know, the, 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 the cookie, the cookie, the wine, they're Jesuit priests. These black Hebrew Israelites who are convinced that they're God's chosen people because of their skin color. That, that's, that's, yeah, that's hard to, yeah, that's pretty difficult. See, they've made a conscious decision. They're deceiving and being deceived. They're gone. The impossible is possible with God, yes? Anything is possible with God, amen. But the probability, dear people, there is a point of no return. Not that God can't save them, but that they've gone so far that they don't want to come back. They can't. Not that God can't save them, but they've gone so far in that. The longer you go in sin, the harder it gets to come away from it. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Jude 1, uh, Jude 1 on the 4. Jude 1 on the 4. Because Jude doesn't have chapters, it is its own book. Jude 1 on 4. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Called. It's not Calvinism. You go the way of the cross. You're called. Okay? Mercy unto you and peace be Peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, common to all people, not just to select people, common to all. Oh, oh except for the black Hebrew Israelites, which is a form of Calvinism. Calvinists, Catholics, huh? or the Pentecostals. 
because they can speak in tongues or or they saw God, which they never did. Okay. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Be no brawlers, we just looked at. But yet it says here to contend. Contend for the faith. Yes, not by not by gunpoint. We don't force it on people. But when people are preaching lies, speak up. Okay? Catholicism is a lie. Free grace is a lie. Calvinism is a lie. Okay? Pentecostalism is a lie. Okay? Okay? We are to contend for the faith. Brawling, physically, forcing, being gentle. You don't take this in one meeting with someone, and I've done this before to my detriment, and cram it down the throat of someone. You don't do that. Gentle, little by little by little. But we are to contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And Christianity ain't it. For there are certain men crept in unawares. They look like us, they sound like us, but they ain't of us. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Now the Calvinists, see, see, elect, no, 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 how are they ordained? Ungodly men. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Every single one of these free gracing devils, free gracer devils who promote this stuff is this. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Oh, gods of lascivious, I can't even spell that. Gods of lasciviousness, yeah. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So they were crept in unawares of old ordained. How? Like Pharaoh. Already, Pharaoh, before God hardened his heart, already believed in his own heart that he was his own God, that he was a God. And even atheists will back that up, that the Pharaohs believed themselves to be God. God. Or a God. Pharaoh thought he was a god. Okay? So, he already thought that of himself. The Lord just helped him to continue in that. Ordained of old, who were before of old, ordained to this condemnation. Old man, still in the, in the old man, not regenerate, not renewed. They've made their choice. They're ungodly men. Not Calvinism. But of old. Old man. Not regenerated. They were never saved. But yet they crept in because they, they take on the facade, the look, the mannerism, the speech pattern even. Second Corinthians 10, Second Corinthians 10, 1 out of 6. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you, in presence and base among you. Not calling attention to himself. See, the mind of Christ is to be a servant. He who is greatest among you, let him be your minister, brother. Mind of Christ will be in this one too. Okay? Alright? But I beseech you, that I may not be bold when I am present, with that confidence wherein I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to you. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. 
And when you get back involved in a banter back and forth, what are you doing? I am guilty of that myself. I have done that before. Because when you fight fire with fire, what wins? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. That's what the strongholds are. Imaginations. You are your own God. Just believe and receive. I've had this. I've done that. I'm black. Blah, blah, blah. Okay? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. James 3. James 3. We covered a portion of this on, in uh, Wednesday's video. But uh, we're going to cover it again. We're going to read this whole chapter. Then we will be done. We have to... I have to remember, too, that we need to watch our mouths. I have no regret, no regret, nor remorse or repentance for anything that has come out of this mouth in regards to devils who are guiding people to hell knowingly. And they all know. Open air preacher, he knows. The free gracers, the majority of them know. I have no regrets about anything I have said of any of those devils. Scum. None. It's the ones that are on the fringe. It's the ones that are being deceived. I end on to you. I apologize. There's no excuse. I will to repent, but you shut up. You've been through what I've been. Don't you ever say that to me. Don't ever let me hear you say that again. I will bite your head off. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And see, you got that open air preacher idiot just. You know, going around, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, dude, where's the fear of the Lord? And it's not there. These guys need to remember, you're, you're preaching, teaching people things there, sweetie pie. I don't claim to be. You're teaching other people. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. I don't have a pride problem. Anyone says that to you, uh, that's evidence that they do have one. And if, the, if they didn't, they wouldn't have to boast that they didn't. That's why I don't like Sam Spit. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouth, mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with the very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Hmm. You know, sometimes we need to just keep our mouths shut. Hey, see this? Okay? See, look at this. Hello? Hello? Teach others. Do you not teach yourself?
And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. No man can tame it. Even Smiley Dave. The only time that man showed any hostility was when a saint questioned him about something. You know, David Daniels' publications. I hope he's okay. But, uh, yeah, the only time he showed any vigor or, or, or whatever, vinegar I should say, towards anyone was when a brother questioned him. Hmm. Therefore we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. This is instruction in righteousness for us. You do have to remember, the book of James is written for the Hebraic Jews for during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh? Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly of dirt, we, sensual, led by your senses, devilish. Self-justification, forgetting <coughs> the three fingers. For where envying and strife is, there's confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and wisdom. There, here are the two wisdoms. One is of the earth, sensual, devilish, of the devil. And the other wisdom, we read uh, part of uh, Romans 8, wisdom that is from God, the fear of the Lord. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Fear of the Lord, there's no hypocrisy. There's no hypocrisy in God. But unless you're from Blackpool, um, there is hypocrisy in us, saints, even. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Nobody pulls the trigger for you. Nobody pulls the trigger for you. You can moan and whine about your circumstances or your environment. Look at Adam and Eve. They had a perfect environment. What happened? If God said, and they made the choice. This is what the lost and the fake don't ever want to grapple with. 
at the end of the day, you pull the trigger. At the end of the day, you have to make the right decision. Unlike what some people tell you, God doesn't make the decision for you. Or else you would or else you'd be a robot. You know what? Let let it show. Let it show. Let these things that these the mistakes let people see them. It's embarrassing, yes. It's humbling, yes. But see, we're men. And until we die and be with the Lord, we ain't going to be perfect. Unless, you know, you, you get it. That's going to be it for this little video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Please keep us in your prayers, brethren. Um, like I said, things are kind of getting worse. Uh, uh, praise the Lord uh, for something that happened today that was... <laughs> thank you! I hope this might help and remind some of you. It's going to be it. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching if you do. I love you. Lord willing, we will see you in the next video. Hopefully that will be the one about Psalm 83. We'll see what happens. Keep me in prayer there, brother. Bye-bye.